Hello, I'm Grant from Maker's Vlog, and today I'm going to cover infrastructure basics. So if you know anything about IT servers and server rooms and things like that, it's probably not the video for you. It's going to be very, um, very high level. Um, what I'm going to go through is sort of what roughly your home network or a very small business may look like if they've just got um, sort of an ISP router. I'll touch on what that means in a second and sort of what a, a medium to uh, scale system infrastructure may look like um, and I'm also going to cover some of the terminologies and the um, devices that you'd find. So the first thing we're going to talk about is routers. Now depending on whether you're a home or in a business the router can look quite different and it also depends on your internet service provider. So here in the UK, we've got quite a few. You've got BT, TalkTalk, Talk, Sky, Virgin Media, um, and there's potentially others. Each of them, whenever you um, buy an internet line or, or lease an internet line, they'll send you out a, a, a router and it will be their own device. A home router is sort of an amalgamation of all of the different things that I'm going to cover here. So I'm going to talk about switches and wireless access points and things like that. The one that you get from your internet service provider is all them bundled into one, which is great for a home user. It's not so good for a business, and I'll, I'll talk about why uh, in in later uh, later videos. But a router is effectively the device that um, routes traffic to the internet. It is one way of describing it, but it actually routes it to different um, addresses. So there is a thing called a LAN and a WAN. LAN is local area network and a WAN is a wide area network. If you think of the WAN as the internet. Now what a router does is allows you to talk to other devices on a WAN. So whether that be say you have two offices, you, your company has two offices, one of them in New York and the other one in London and you don't have a, a direct connection uh, between them or maybe you do but you have the, the network separated. A router would be what would allow traffic between the two. So whenever your computer sends a message, it would go to the router and then out um, to the internet or out to whatever pipeline you have to your um, other office, and then it would allow it to go through. Now, routers, as I said, can look quite different. The one that you can see on the left here, this is more what you would see in a business setting. Again, they can look wildly different. Um, but the this one here doesn't have any wireless capability, anything like that. It is just a, a, a router. The one on the right is more like what you would see in um, your home, uh, potentially. You know, you might have one that doesn't have these antennas sticking out the back or whatever. Um, and it is effectively, you know, as I said, an all-in-one. So it's the router, it's your Wi-Fi, it's everything. What all these do is allow communication effectively out to a WAN or in most cases, as you'll know, it just straight out to the internet. Um, it does allow traffic between what is called VLANs or separate LANs. Um, and I'll cover that as and when we get to talking about um, switches in a security sense. I'll, I'll talk about how that communication happens. But for the meantime, just bear in mind that it allows connectivity to the internet. Next thing we're going to talk about are switches. I'd mentioned in the last slide there about LANs and WANs. A switch allows communication between LANs. So if you've got a load of computers, just say we take this one here on the right, this small Netgear 5 port, and I plugged in five computers. Those computers would be able to talk to each other. Not a problem. However, it can't go out to the internet. Okay, it's not, this does not allow connectivity straight out to the internet. This must go to a router. So you must have your switch connected to the router in order to allow that traffic to get out to the internet. A switch just allows traffic locally. You connect a ring to a switch and it'll allow that local traffic. Again, depending on where you are, it can come in various different flavors. You've got this one here on the left, which is um, a rack mounted switch, which um, you know, you'll know you see in a, in a larger infrastructure. Um, these are usually very configurable, so you can set up different rules and things like that to allow certain computers to talk to other computers. And you can also set it um, I'd mentioned in the, uh, earlier there that if you have two offices, you can have it even set that say two floors, say you've got accounting on one floor and IT on the other, and you don't want their computers to talk to each other. You can set it up on um, switches like this 
that they are on separate and it's called VLANs, virtual LANs. It's the equivalent of having two separate switches and they're not connected to each other. In that case, if those two computers wanted to talk to each other, the switch will send it to the router and the router then decides whether it's going to allow it to talk. So it effectively splits it up. Again, I'll, I'll cover that more when I get to switches in later videos. Uh, in the home or in a small business, you might have something like this um, sort of smaller switch. They can get a bit bigger even in the home environment, but these are usually what's called unmanaged. So with this one, I'd said that you can do all sorts of configuration and put rules in place and allow computers to talk to other computers and not talk to some. These are usually um, dumb in that they will let anything that's plugged into them talk to anything else. Again, it still can't talk to the internet. It needs to go to a router. So there needs to be one of these cables going to your router to allow connect connectivity out of your own network. But anything you plug into these will be allowed to talk to anything else in the environment. Wireless access points, also called WAPs, although given a, a recent video that went out by Cardi B, if you Google WAP, you get something completely different. But that's what WAP used to stand for, wireless access point. In your home, you'll probably have um, just a router. So uh, it probably looks something like this or the router that I showed in the, in the slide above. And in that, it's an all-in-one, but it's just a way of using wireless um, connectivity. Most home routers will have them built in. Some um, high-end or some um, industrial ones, more professional grade stuff, do have Wi-Fi built in, but it's not common. Usually you use something like this on the left. And this is a little TATP link one. And if you work in an office, you might see these mounted on the uh, on the roof. And all they do is allow wireless connectivity. So you wirelessly connect to one of those and then you're on, on the network. Um, the likes of this one here on the right, um, I just found this because it was a you know, close approximation of a router. If you're in a home environment or your small business has an all-in-one uh, router hub, you know, it'll, it'll probably look something like this, but effectively it's the same. It just allows wireless communication. Next one, firewalls. Now, this is quite a fancy one. Well, quite fancy looking, but they come in all shapes and uh, sizes. They can look a lot duller than this. Uh, this is a watch guard firewall and they're all red because, you know, it looks cool. But a firewall effectively does the security. Um, most larger businesses and uh, medium businesses will have a, a firewall. A small business, if you've got a server room, you should have a firewall of some shape or form in there. Um, some home routers, or if you buy an all-in-one router, it'll come labeled say that it's a firewall. It's what's called a software-based firewall. And all they mean by that is they, do, they can do some filtering. So they can um, pick out some traffic and stop it before it gets you know any farther but they're not very good at it. Um, compared to something like this, which is a dedicated firewall appliance, which is, you know, all this box does is firewall stuff. Um, you know, the difference is between night and day. However, they can be very expensive, but this is effectively your first line of defense in security. If someone tries to come into your network via the internet, this is the device that's going to stop them, but it's entirely rule based. And so whoever set this up, um, initially for you or if you set it up yourself it's based on what rules you put in you if you put you plug this device in and you don't configure your rules properly into it you may as well not have it it'll just be you know the person the attacker can come in and straight into your network it's not that effective it needs to be configured correctly and i will cover um, a video on configuring um firewalls in general now there's um depend on the firewall depends what it does. Um, a lot of firewalls can do a lot of cool things and very, very complex things. Some firewalls can't. Um, it depends on the firewall and how you configure it is also dependent on, on the firewall. I'll be showing sort of a rough, this is sort of the way that your rules should be to be, you know, to maximize effectiveness in general, but then it depends very much on your firewall itself. Generally, if you buy a firewall appliance like this, like WatchGuard or whatever, um, or Cisco or, um, uh, semantic or anything like that um usually they'll come with support and if they come with support use it you know ring them up say look i've got the appliance i need it configured and work with them on it and they'll help you you know get it set up in, a, in an effective method okay last thing i'm going to talk about before we move on to a network diagram is servers 
Um, this is what everyone thinks of when they think of a server room, you know, it's just racks of these devices. And yeah, there is an element of that, but there are other variations of it. People use server as a general broad stroke, but there are a lot of different things in there. But that's a more complicated topic and we'll get onto that um, in, in a different video. But this is effectively what hosts your web server, your um, emails, your files, all that will be controlled by these. But all they are effectively is a computer, similar to what you've got on your on your desk. If you've got a laptop or, or desktop that you work on, it's effectively the same. It's just built in a way to uh, maximize it for you know, constantly being used and doing a thing called, well, most modern ones anyway, are, are um, orientated towards doing a thing called virtualization. And all that means is you have one box here, so say I have this, but I could have maybe five or six servers on it and they're running virtually. So before I talked about a thing called VLANs where you're taking a switch and sort of um, virtually splitting it into multiple switches, even though you just got the one device, it's the same idea with a server. You're you're virtually splitting it into loads of different servers and divvying up its power, its processing power between them. And most servers are built so that they can do this quite effectively. This is the thing that most people worry about being attacked. And I mean, rightly so. This will have your users' data on it. It could have your customers' data on it. It could have your website on it that could be brought down. So this, this is the thing that you want to protect and there are things that you can do on that to protect itself. I'll talk about them in a later video, as I said, but this is sort of the, the meat in, um, in the server room. Now, if you're a small business, you might not have one of these. You know, if you just got a website, you don't really need to have a whole server room just for a website. You can, you know, they're hosting um, platforms out there like you know GoDaddy and uh, uh, Squarespace and things like that where they'll host their website for you you know you don't need a server room if that's all you're using but as soon as you start getting to you know um, having a lot of employees and maybe a lot of users on computers you're going to start needing servers so this is a network diagram and uh, we've got it all nicely labeled here you've got IP phones don't worry about that it's just a it's a fa it's just a phone system that works over the internet it's what most companies use nowadays. You've got a printer, laptop, desktop computer, and your router and firewall. Um, this I marked up as like a, a effectively a home uh, network diagram. Obviously, you wouldn't necessarily have an IP phone, probably not in most cases. And also the firewall would be integrated into the wireless router. As I said before, most internet service providers, whenever they give you a, a router, they say it's got a firewall built in. It is definitely not, you know, it is not one of these. It is a software firewall. It basically means that you can put rules in place to try and limit things moving about. But they're usually not fantastic. Now, the drawback to a network like this is that a lot of small businesses use a network like this. Um, they get a, a router from their internet service provider, they plug everything into it, and that's it, they're done. You know, They might have a couple of switches if they've got a couple of computers in there, but that's about the height of it. Security wise, this is this is not great. Um, effectively, if someone comes in via the internet and gets access through the router, they can access everything else without being hindered at all. Um, it's this was called a very flat network. It means everything can talk to everything else quite easily, and it's not very secure. But this is this is what you would see usually in your home. Um, it would be a router directly connected to everything else, and in your home, that's that's fine. You know, um, you don't need to have massive amounts of security. But as I said, I will cover things that you can do to the router and to your devices just to, just to step up the security a bit. And this network diagram is more akin to what you would see in a medium to um, large business. And this one is actually quite well secured. It's pretty decent. So you want the firewall to be the first thing that someone coming into the network hits and then it applies all the security rules and things to stop them getting any further. Um, you can also see here that they've got another firewall at the um, after the wireless access point, and that's because Wi-Fi can be quite insecure, um, even on a even on a, a private network. So um, it is good practice to have it go through a, either a separate firewall or the same firewall, just to you know make sure that you know anyone who gets on the Wi-Fi isn't isn't malicious. And you can see here we've got the two switches, and 
these are the uh, desktops so the computers that the users will be on as I said before about uh, I talked about LANs and as you can see these switches are connected together so all of these computers so these computers here you can see go to this switch and these computers here go to this switch if I wanted to uh, as I said before say that this one is accounts and this one is IT and I don't want these computers to easily talk to each other um, we can have a rule in place that they are on separate LANs, so separate networks. And what that means is that any communication, say from this PC, say it wants to talk to this PC over here, the communication would go up into the switch. The switch would say, well, you're not on, you're not on the network that I know about, so I don't know how to send you to that computer. I don't know about it. But I do know that the router here is my gateway so it knows that okay anything that I don't know how to get to it sends it to the router and so it will go up here up to the router the router would look at it and go oh okay you're trying to get to this computer do I have any rules that say you're not allowed to get to that computer if not it then sends it down to this switch and then the switch passes it on because this switch is aware of that network now this network is quite good uh, from a from a security perspective orientation wise um, the network that I had mentioned in the previous video that I'm going to be building to to test um, or sorry to to build up as a unsecure just you know built out of the box a um, couple of servers and stuff really insecure and then build it from from there up will not be anything like this it will be a switch some um, virtual desktops a router and servers and that's it and then I'll show sort of you know adding in firewalls and protections and things like that um, all the firewalls and things like that that I'll be doing will be you know either open source or free where I can get away with it because see, I don't want to spend a lot of money on this and so uh, especially for a small company using a free open source firewall is a hell of a lot better than nothing so that's it that's that's infrastructure basics um, so in the next video hopefully I will have the other server or the infrastructure server set up and we can uh, we can start going into the security aspect of it so hope you enjoyed speak to you later